Yo, so this is a follow-up to last week's topic about good times. Hey, good times. Um, yes, so we talked about the backlash. Now, some of the voice actors on the show are speaking out and responding to the backlash. So let's see what they have to say. Now, speaking of paper, have you seen the, the reviews that people have been giving giving the show? Oh, I've been seeing some very colorful and very encouraging <laughs> reviews, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really loving them, man. I'm, I'm so happy that the people are, are checking it out right now, man. You know what I'm saying? Just to be, you know what I'm saying? To, 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 to get the spotlight on you for a change for the great things you do. I really appreciate that. Of course, people are talking about like it being for kids. Like I can't sit down and watch it um, with my kids. Um, you know, seeing babies with guns and like all these different type of things. And, and I think that's that's your character. So what what's your what's your reaction to the criticism? Oh man, uh, it's not for children. I am a parent, and this is a whole nother conversation, but the internet and social media is a Pandora's box that you have to control as a parent because it's not my job to raise your kids. You have to filter what comes into your home. Now, you as a parent have to be the one with the gift of discernment to understand reality and satire. That's it. Yeah. Some things are satirical. I'm sorry if it might hurt your feelings, but it's satire. So my thoughts on that quick little interview. I like Slink. Slink's the homie. Shout out to Slink. Shout out to he worked on Black Jesus. That's a great show. I think that Symphony was giving him very softball questions like she should have asked him directly. Hey, how do you feel about the over uh, sensualized stigmas of black people in the show? The stereotypes when it comes to guns, drugs, uh, strippers, uh, whatever it was, prostitutes, all the stuff that they had going on, like, you know, kind of very heavy on ghetto tropes. She didn't ask any of that. I think for, I think it's like, he's trying to say you haven't even seen it yet, but I think people, one, don't want to see the, see, see anything that relates to something they remember with nostalgia. That's the thing. You can't tie nostalgia to new ideas. And, and at the end of the day, uh, people say it looks like new age minstrel, uh, uh, minstrel tree, minstrel, minstrel, see, Ooh, minstrel show. And I get that. And it's like been a two minute, 40 second, uh, whatever you call it, like, um, an intro, a trailer. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, I think, I think, oh, oh, that's what I was going to say. Slinks in a, in a weird spot, like. If you're a cast member on the show, you don't want to come out and actively talk on the project you just did because they paid you handsomely. And if Netflix gets a season two, you probably want your job back. Now, like I mentioned, actually, I did not mention this, but I said it in the comments of my last video. A lot of people who are on that side of things with like the voice acting, unless you're a writer or you're part of the animation team, you're not 100% show, sure how it's all going to be depicted when it's finally said and done. So as a voice actor, I remember when I got the script and I read the first like, they only gave me like a page and a half to read, especially voice acting. They don't give you a lot to look at. but. I remember reading it and I thought like, oh, okay, sure, new age, uh, good times. I didn't I also didn't think the characters were representing the original characters. I thought it was more like the name Good Times, and then it's like a remake, rehash, not an not like a not like a continuation, but a remake of how good times might be in this day and age or a, just a completely different family with good times tied to it. Either way, there are a lot of black stereotypical tro tropes, excuse me, tropes that do not uplift or make black people look good. There just aren't like we, we saw the original trailer. We got the we got the uh, ghetto baby slanging drugs from the stroller. We have what looked to be like strippers and people shaking ass. We had the government bringing guns into the neighborhood and then people shooting at each other kind of like a like a o block project in chicago the you know i i feel like i feel like the character designs are okay 
I didn't think they were that bad personally, but you know, I, you know, people are going to have, um, what do you call it? People are always going to have big reactions to things that they do or don't understand. So it's not like you can really control it, but for slink being there, I mean, outside of him just saying it was a fine show, it was a good job. I worked on it and I'm proud of it because I was a part of it and I got to work with like other legends in the game. I'm happy to be working as a working entertainer. You know, I, I think some people think, uh, some people sit back and say like, well, what about your integrity uh, and all that? And I mean, I no disrespect, I don't think there's a lot of integrity in entertainment. I think people are just trying to like do a job. There's integrity when you're supposed to be representing other like really well-known intellectual properties and showing love to it. Now. I would say if any of the voice actors got the information that the original creators were not involved and also were against it, then they could have made the decision to say, oh, no, thank you. I don't want to do it. I may or may not would have done that depending on if I got the job. But at the end of the day, if you get a job and you're not really hyper aware of what's you, what you're about to get into, you, you kind of get into the job and then you're like, ah, crap, do I want to like quit this job that might be like a good look for my career or do I want to just go in there and like do the do the jokes and then just get it over with and and in the next you know news cycle it'll be over with you know nobody's gonna nobody's really gonna care like this is a project where you you would have to hold everyone who is a part of this accountable until the end of time is everybody gonna do that I don't think so so with that being said I feel like they're gonna have a lot of people who are upset rightfully so and then you're gonna have a lot of people who just don't care like if you like you know don't give it any energy and it'll maybe get a season two maybe fade into the sunset and then we'll just look back and be like oh yeah remember when they did that kind of like when they did dragon ball z the live action movie and it was like yo no 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 don't do that but also with dragon ball well well, yeah, there weren't like there weren't like Asian stereotypes in Dragon Ball. If anything, there wasn't enough Asian people in it to begin with because Goku's white. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just think I think for Slink, it's up to him if he wants to have what I think uh, people on the outside looking in is integrity to not be a part of something like that. But I, I think a lot of y'all don't realize that uh, integrity is uh, salvageable. It, when it comes to being able to live and work and continue to provide for your family. And I would ask you all the same thing. You know, if somebody gave you, uh, I guess, I guess some people are looking at it from the perspective of selling out, right? Right. To your own community. That's what it would be. So if somebody gave you the opportunity to help yourself go into a better place and be able to work on something and also maybe further your career, would you, I mean, I, I mean, depending on you all, who you are, yeah, you might just be like, yeah, no, it's not for me. I'm going to wait for the next one, which is fine. I would say a lot of people don't even have the option to say that because like, you know, I don't know how often Slink works. If, La if Black Jesus is the last thing he worked on, that was like four, no, five, 2017 or 18 or 19 that show ended. Yeah, like five years ago. So that's the last thing he might have worked on outside of Grand Theft Auto V, which I know he's probably not getting residuals on for that because voice acting in video games is not the same as voice acting in TV and movies. So he's allowed to make whatever decision he wants to make. And I mean, people are allowed to shame him if they want to. But at the end of the day, he doesn't care. He's probably just living his life. He's like, y'all don't dictate like that. Who is it that said that to me? My wife said this to me. I think she said. She said, do you pay my bills? <laughs> and, I, and I was like, what? And she was like, I, I think she said she heard it somewhere. She said, if they don't pay my bills, I don't give a f what they think about me or what's going on. But it, that's not her quote. That's a quote that I think she had showed with me. I feel like it was a Cardi B quote or something. I can't remember. But it's like, yeah, whatever. Shame me to the to the depths of hell. But some people are just going to do what they want. I, I sometimes look at projects like that and I, I feel a little differently. I'm like, I, I don't know. You know what? I'll be honest. I never thought this show was going to get backlash because I did not. First off, I don't know Good Times that well. I don't know the, the show that well. I didn't really watch it. It was in the 70s. I was born in the 80s. So 
I'm not even really connected enough for me to feel a way about, about this. So for me, when I read the script, I didn't see any red flags. I kind of just read it and was like, oh, okay, whatever. It's funny. Sure, whatever. Black family animated sitcom. I, I'm sure if I would have gotten more scripts down the road and had to keep reading them, I'd have been like, oh, fine, okay. And then at that point, you're there. You're in the job. Like, it's going to be... It's going to look so bad on you if you try to bounce mid work or if you even can. You might be contractually obligated at that point because you signed a document. So, yeah, I also feel like it's different when people who don't work in the entertainment industry look at it uh, from that lens. But then again, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe everybody just looks at it very uh uh, broadly and and says, no, you know, integrity is integrity. You either have it or you don't. That's possible, too. Uh, well, yeah, I would ask ask more of the question of who wrote the series. That's what I'm curious. I thought I knew who like tried to create it and get it going, but I don't know who it was that wrote the series. Let me see if I can look that up real quick. Hold on. OK, let's see. Let's see. Creators, Renata Shepard, Carl Jones still attached to it. Carl, you better go check that out. All right. So we're on the page and it tells you everyone who worked on what parts of the show. So Renata Shepard, according to IMDb, wrote on it and did 10 episodes for the show. Carl Jones, I guess, originally was starting to work and create on it, but then he backed out after, I guess, something early in the beginning is what I heard. According to what he told me, I actually texted him and he told me that. JD from the future here. There have been more responses to the Good Times reboot from Yvette Nicole Brown, who is on it, and also John Amos, who was on the original. Let's read and react how they feel about it. All right, so Yvette Nicole Brown responded on Twitter and she said, this version of Good Times is edgier and more irreverent than the good times of our childhood, but it's still a show about family, fighting the system and working to make things better despite where you start out in the world. That's 100% what lines up with my values. Because someone responded to her about this project and said, I'm surprised you attach yourself to this project. It looks nothing like the show we grew up on, which it's not going to look the same. It's going to look a lot different and it might be really weird. And she also followed up saying, let me clarify how this page works for those who have forgotten. This isn't an op-ed repository nor complaint box. Hot takes are for your page. Post your think pieces there. Nobody's forcing you to watch something you don't want to watch. So just don't watch it. Solved. Three. I spent my time, and this is what I just read, spent her time shining a light and coming for her as a fool's errand, and you don't have to like the project that she's a part of and all that stuff, but, you know, uh, just because you don't like it doesn't mean it doesn't have merit, and then she said, does that feel better, and then, then she says, now get out there and write your own things about projects uh, or screeds, I don't know what this is, now get out there and write your screeds, I think she means, like, complaints about a show that you've only seen a two-minute trailer for, go off as if you know the fullness of the journey or the message we're trying to share about the systemic barriers and all the things that we face in our life. I just said that a second ago. Good times indeed. All right. So she chose to go that way about it. She's kind of like, yo, I'm working. This is a job. You don't know anything about the show. You've only seen a two minute clip. So you're not 100 percent sure about what is going on, which is true. It is true. I know that we are audience members, and uh, I mean, I also uh, work in this industry, but they're not wrong. You don't know what they're going to show when the show comes out. But if it rubbed you the wrong way the first time, you don't have to consume it. This is true. Now, let's see what John Amos has to say about it, because he wrote something uh, or had an interview recently, and he said this about the show. He wrote or said... Ba -ba 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 -ba, zooming in so I can read this thing. Sorry. He wrote, well, I can't really form an opinion as I've not seen any of the episodes yet. Amos says he goes on to explain that the high quality of the 90s, uh, excuse me, 1970s series makes it challenging for newer projects that aspire to be compared to it. Norman, this is him and I and the entire cast and company set the bar pretty high. They'll have a hard time reaching that level of entertainment and education. I wish them the best. I see people aspiring to that, but I don't see anybody reaching that goal, especially in animated versions. And then it says Stannis, who was also on the show, uh, stars in the forthcoming BET Plus series, The Family Business, uh, New Orleans edition. And she wrote, 
uh, or she says that she had yet to watch the animated trailer for Good Times and heard a mixture of responses. The actress looks toward, excuse me, forward to watching the revival episodes, but acknowledges that some fans of the 70s series would probably have assumed that the original show's cast is front and center for the animated version, given that it uses the same name. Probably, this is her, a lot of people don't know how Hollywood works, which is true. Stannis says a lot of times you use a certain name to open up the door for a new show. That could, that could be what it is. But I'm sure a lot of people will be a little bit confused at first because they have to think that it's us. They think, oh my God, that's got to be Thelma, JJ, Michael, Michael. And then you come in there and you don't see anything like that. That is a very valid uh, response. She's not wrong because that is a thing that Hollywood will do. They'll take an old popular IP and they'll either reboot it or they'll use the name in order to promote something that is kind of on the same linear path, but it's being taken in a different creative direction. Hence how we have Dune in 2024, Dune 1 and 2 who had just recently released. Go back and watch the old Dune from the 80s where they were where they were fighting against uh, Legos, <laughs> fighting against Pong. Yeah, it's true. That's, that is what happens. All right, cool. Those were just some extra inserts to this story. And now I will let JD from the past finish off this portion of the segment. I know a lot of y'all out there don't like it, and I'm not here to say to give it a chance, but I know for a fact that people are going to watch it, review it, and follow up on it, so you will hear about it farther down the road in April, and you can choose to not click on videos that talk about it, or click on it and get a synopsis from somebody else's point of view on what happened, and then just move forward with your lives, because it's whatever. At the end of the day, it's over. You know, the they made the show, People hate it, even though it hasn't even come out, and there's nothing we can do about it now. And just keep your integrity and do what you want to do with it throughout your lives and careers. But you can't really, I don't know, you can throw stones and cast stones on people who you think don't have it, but I don't know. I don't know what that does for you. That's just my two, two cents. Um, I, I, I guess I'm glad I didn't get the job. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I don't know. All right. Cut the cameras. Uh,